It is hot, it is humid, so what better a time to record a sewing tutorial? My name is Elisa. Today I'll finally get to making something that has been a very long time in the making. If you've been around here for a while, you know that I've recently started working on my second sewing pattern, which is this beautiful occasion wear slash wedding guest outfit. It's a neck halter dress that's supposed to come in a light, silky, satiny fabric. I've gone through two iterations of this already before I was ready to send the pattern to my testers. So this is now done as well. Thank you so much to my testers who volunteered to make Sophia, which is the name of this dress. And today I'm finally ready to make the dress in its intended shape and form, which is with this absolutely gorgeous Liberty Silk, which I've had for months now. I've just come back from the Bachelorette slash Hindu weekend in the run-up to this family wedding that happens in a few weeks. So I'm super motivated to finally get this done. The pattern is tweaked and finalized, the fabric is waiting, so let's get to cutting all of our pieces. First things first, what you want to do is print your pattern. For that, make sure that it is scaled to 100% so that the pattern pieces come out true to scale. Alright, once it's printed, it should look something like this. My printer is not that great and it's going a bit rogue so you can see it's off kilt here. But for you, this should be perfectly centered. What you want to make sure is that this square here is 2x2 two two centimeters. This ensures that the pattern is to scale. Also, there is an explanation here as to how to easily assemble your printed pages if you don't print it in a A0 format. Alright, once your pattern is taped together, it looks a little something like this. And you can see here how the system works. Every page has a number in its four corners. And you find the same four numbers, put them together, and then you have this section of the pattern. Pretty simple. The description of the pattern is pretty straightforward. You can see grain lines here, you can see fold lines, and also you can see that the skirt is kept to a minimum because I wanted to save paper on the PDF and I didn't want you to have to assemble a huge circle skirt. So what you're gonna do is you either keep it to the mini length it is right now, or you extend it to the midi or maxi length that you need for your height. Okay, so all the pieces are cut. There are a few unexpected turns that I took for reasons I don't entirely understand. My flight is like an oven right now, so I'll quickly jump out and I'll take this strap of fabric with me to get the right color for it. Okay, so I'll start out with this piece, which is our top front. You can see here that we have a few pleats indicated in the pattern. It's really important to get the notches right. If, like me, you made the mistake and did not place your front pieces on a fold in the center front, you will have to sew them together at the center front. So this is what I'm doing first. Again, just to repeat myself, the way to cut this correctly is indicated in the pattern. So you should have a fold here and you shouldn't have to do this. When you sew silk, it's very important to use needles that are made specifically for silks. They would either be called silk needles or sharps. Generally, just go with the thinnest one you can find. 
Once your piece looks like this, you take it and open the two sides up. We basically have a shell in the lining and a single piece. So it looks like a butterfly. I'm now folding the right sides touching like this. And then I start to clip or pin together these two legs of the V. I'm now gonna go ahead and sew this shape. Now that the piece looks like this, we can actually go ahead, grab into it, and turn it right sides out. It's always smart to nip the seam allowance here, where the apex of the V is. This lets your V relax a little bit. You can now give it a press. Alright, once the piece looks like this and the V is pressed, you can go ahead, open up, the two sides once more and place the two legs of the V on top of each other. What you want to keep in mind is which side is your front side and which side, which side is your back side. Grab a few pins and start pinning the two seams on top of each other. I do this by feeling it rather than seeing it. If you've cut your pattern pieces properly, then you will find a notch as you pin this up. This notch indicates where you can stop sewing. Again, we have to think of this as our lining and this is our shell. And we want a clean look on the outside, so we have to sew on the right side of our existing seam, in my case. So you can see here, we now have two relatively straight seams. And when we turn this right side out again and find our front, we should have a very clean looking closed center front that we can now go and press. We now want to fixate our bust pleats in place like this. And to do this, you simply place the whole piece in front of you. And you do make sure that everything is nice and flat and the shell and the lining lay on top of each other perfectly. You will have notches here if you've marked them. What you want to do is you always want to take the lower notch and take it towards the upper notch. And that is so that the pleat is looking up rather than down. And make sure to pleat the whole fabric parallel to your neckline and not like this. Right? You want it parallel to the neckline. That then means that these little pieces of seam allowance are flush with the side of your piece. Always be careful when you use pins on silk. And then the second one, same thing. Again, parallel to the neckline, flush with the side. Right, and to finally prepare this to be joined with the back, we are gonna take this to the sewing machine, set it to a basting stitch length, and we're just gonna top stitch this down so it stays in place. No need to lock the seam, it just should stay where it is. And now we have the entirety of the front piece prepared, and that was the most complicated part about this pattern. From now on, it gets easy. Always make sure to take your pieces to the iron between each step to keep it nice and clean. When I went outside earlier, I didn't just get a zipper and a matching thread. I also went to go and see if I could find some good lining. And I went with a bit of an unexpected choice. So this is mesh, which is stretchy. It's in the color of my fabric. And the advantage of this is that it is super breathable because obviously it has holes. Also, I don't necessarily have to hem the hem because it doesn't fray. So I'm hoping that having this extra layer between me, myself and I, and the actual silk is gonna keep the silk a little bit more pristine, thinking that the wedding is gonna take place somewhere and during a time of year where it's really, really hot. So I'm hoping that this layer of mesh will allow me to keep the dress nicer for longer and also not like sweat through the silk when I'm sitting down. That wouldn't look too good. <laughs> this is my front side with the pleats looking up and now I can attach the back pieces. I have four of these pieces here, which is my top back shell plus lining piece. First of all, I need to choose the pattern that I want to be seen on the back. I'm gonna go for this one. And then the corresponding pieces, I place right sides touching. I now clip the neckline. And once I've done that, I can take these pieces to my machine and sew along the neckline to get a nice finish. I will understitch the seam eventually, but not for now. Okay, I'll now take this to my iron, fold it right sides out and press these seams. Okay, so once the pieces look like this, we can grab our front piece, place it so that the front is looking up, and then we place the two back sides, right sides touching. Again, because I have a random pattern on my silk, I decide that this is my front 
really it wouldn't matter. I could choose either side. So what I'm doing now is I'm sandwiching the side of the front piece in between the two layers of my back piece. So in between the shell and the lining. I'm using needles this time. So once I've pinned one side, I open the back piece and I fold it over the front like this to really try and like I said, sandwich the side of the front like this. I can go and sew the side seam down on both sides. And now the idea is, when I pull it back out, I should hopefully have a nice clean finish. All right, our piece now looks like this. And it might be that you want to cut back the waist a little bit because things are not totally symmetrical, which they are for me. That just happens during the sewing process sometimes. So you can see here that the side seam of the front is a little bit too long. That doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the pattern, but just how things go while you sew. And you can see that with slippery fabric, it's more likely that you will have to trim things sometimes, but that's perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and very carefully. Now it looks a whole lot cleaner. The next thing I will do before I move on to my skirt is actually overturn the strap that is gonna hold the neckline up. Alright, once this is stitched closed, we can take something like a chopstick or maybe you have an overturner and I'm going to use this to overturn the strap. Once the piece looks like this, this is a good time to understitch the seam allowance. And you do that by pressing the seam allowance of the back into the lining piece. And now I'm going to understitch it as far as I can get to the side seam. Okay, straps are done, top is done, let's grab the skirt pieces. The first one I'm grabbing is the shell, and the shell needs to be pinned together with the front, right sides touching. So I'm gonna do myself a favor, lift up the top, place the shell in front of me, and then I'll place the top right sides touching onto the shell, and then I'll start to pin the waist seam together, starting from the center front. Then I will try to line up the sides. So my back is plenty too big. That happens because the curve of the skirt in the back changes the grain line of the fabric, and that eventually helps the fabric to extend, and therefore become longer than necessary. All right, now that the waist is pinned, I can go ahead and sew the entirety of the waist seam following the shape of the top. I guess it's time to try the dress. All right, this is what we're looking at. The dress is very long at the moment and I went ahead and decided I would attach the straps in the back like this rather than tie them up in the neck. And that is because I feel like it just suits this fabric and the dress and the character of it a little bit better, makes it look a little bit more elegant, and the back looks a little bit more refined. So that's what I'm gonna go with. The same thing that applied for the shell skirt applies for the lining skirt. I'm gonna grab this, find the waist, and I'll start to pin the lining from the other side so it's facing up towards the bodice. And now I'll place it so that when it falls down, it is sandwiching the unfinished waist seam between the lining and the shell. And now I'll sew this as well. Now, when I open the two skirts and fold the lining down, this is what we have on the inside. An extra layer of fabric that's gonna keep us from touching silk too much. So what I'm doing now is I'm pinning together the back with all the layers of it. So the shell and the lining, all of them should match up. Once the back is pinned together, I grab my zipper and I assess the length of it. I'm gonna use the entirety of it. I will now baste this section of the center back and from here, I'm gonna actually lock my seam and sew the rest with a normal stitch length of three that I've been using all over the dress. And I'll show you in a bit why. 
Once this is sewn together, you can press the back seam open and then go ahead and open the upper section back up again, the section that is just basted. And I'm doing this just so I can give myself a guidance of where the zipper needs to be placed. You have to place the right sides facing with your shell and start pinning it in from there. Your teeth of the zipper should align with the crease of the ironing just before. Alright, I just came back from shooting the Sophia dress and I am so pleased with how it turned out. This has been a long time in the making. It was quite a process getting to this end result for this particular pattern and I'm so proud to say that from today it is available in my Etsy shop. I'd be so pleased if you gave it a go and let me know how it turned out. If you do have any questions about the construction process that have not been covered in this tutorial, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or on Etsy. I'll be sure to reply to your questions. With that being said, I am so pleased with how the pattern in and of itself turned out, but I'm also very proud of how this particular Sophia dress turned out with the Liberty Silk. I think it is so beautiful. The fabric really shines in this simple yet sophisticated construction. I'm so glad I stuck to my guns <laughs> and didn't listen to anybody who told me that they thought that the print was too busy for this dress. I think it looks beautiful. At the same time, I also believe that the dress would shine in a plain version. Maybe I'm gonna make that really soon. I'll keep you updated on it. I'm so pleased with it. I think it looks so stunning, if I may say so myself. And it is comfortable to wear and it is modern and sophisticated and sleek and I'm just super pleased with it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear what you think about the Sophia dress. And again, please consider giving the pattern a go yourself. And that's all I have to say. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Occasion wear slash getting west, getting west. <laughs> My flat is like a hood right now. A hood. <laughs>